I'd like to play a clip of one of your famous mm -hmm. exchanges with Anthony Fauci from July 2021, where you're asking him to correct the record after he denied the government ever funded gain of function research. Let's roll that. Dr. Fauci, knowing that it is a crime to lie to Congress, do you wish to retract your statement of May 11th, where you claimed that the NIH never funded gain of function research in Wuhan? Senator Paul, I have never lied before the Congress and I do not retract that statement. This paper that you are referring to was judged by qualified staff up and down the chain as not being gain of function. So what was, let take, me finish. You take an animal virus and you increase its yeah. transmissibility to humans, right. you're saying that's not gain of function? Yeah, that is correct. And, and Senator Paul, you do not know what you are talking about, quite frankly. And I wanna say that officially. You do not know what you are talking about. What are your reflections on that, knowing what you know now? Well, it's a great clip in the, in the sense that his response is that his experts at the NIH have judged this up and down the chain, have judged this not to be gain-of-function research. Well, this is very intriguing. So what we have been requesting for two years is the discussion. If his scientists discussed and debated and concluded that this was not gain-of-function research, let us see the deliberations. So one of two things are possible. Either he's overstating the case and the deliberations never took place, or the deliberations took place and aren't quite as clear-cut as he's making it. And so far, the NIH has refused to reveal any of these documents. So these are not classified documents, but still the NIH is more secretive at this point than the CIA. Hmm. We can't get NIH documents or HHS documents. We get, uh, there are several different articles or descriptions of discussions that we want. We have the name of them. They send it to us and it'll be 250 pages long, all redacted. So it's making it impossible for us to assess the truth, to have oversight, but it's also impossible for us to fix the problem if they don't let us examine what happened this time around. Yeah, you know, there was a redacted email that uh, really made me start to consider the level of deception that might be at play here. It was this February 2020 email that Fauci sent. You'll see it there on the left side of the screen, the redacted version, and the House committee uh, was able to get it uh, unredacted. And if you zoom in on this uh, highlighted portion of the unredacted email, this was with his kind of inner circle of scientists talking about this phone call where they all agreed they were concerned early on that this was a lab leak. And uh, that concern was heightened by the fact, they say, that scientists in Wuhan University are known to have been working on gain of function experiments. And kind of further research has found these uh, the, uh, papers like this one, uh, this 2017 paper, Discovery of a Rich Pool of Bat SARS-Related Coronaviruses. Uh, this was a collaboration between the Wuhan lab and Peter Daszak's EcoHealth Alliance and was funded by uh, an NIH grant. And the, you know, the highlights here just show that uh, basically they created a bunch of artificial viruses by combining eight different bat, bat SARS uh, coronaviruses with the, the WIV-1 uh, backbone, and then those viruses replicated efficiently in human cells. So I, I guess the, the question I have there is, it, it's clear in your book that you believe there's likely a, a level of deception here. If that proves to be true, what sort of consequences should there be? You know, it's a crime. It's a felony to lie to Congress. It's punishable to up to five years in prison. After we determined that Fauci did lie to Congress, that indeed he had funded gain-of-function research, we submitted the evidence to uh, the Attorney General, to Merrick Garland, but unfortunately he's not done anything with it. A year later, when more evidence accrued, we referred him again for criminal prosecution, and yet nothing has done. But the thing is, is that everything that he's saying there in private, in that email, he's basically admitting it was gain-of-function. He knows that they funded it. He knows that the the virus looks manipulated. And yet at the same time he was saying that, this is essentially February 1st of 2020, four days later, he commissions a, an article to be written in a journal by his cohorts. One of the main ones was Christian Anderson. In private, Christian Anderson is saying, this is not a conspiracy theory. This is not a fringe theory. In fact, it may be the most 
likely theory that the virus came from a lab. In the paper that they publish at Anthony Fauci's behest, they say explicitly that a lab-constructed virus is not a plausible idea at all, not even plausible, not really to them virtually possible. They, in fact, conclude in the abstract of that paper that COVID is not a laboratory construct. Not that it probably isn't. It is not a laboratory construct. Meanwhile, saying privately, they think it's most likely. We have several of these scientists saying, I'm 80, 20, uh, 80% lab, 20% nature. You know, 50, 50, some of them are saying. Meanwhile, in public, they're, they're acting with surety. They're acting with complete confidence. But really what they're doing is issuing a, a nothing to see here notice. It's a, it's a cover your ass. Basically, they don't want people to draw the linkage because they know they're responsible for funding this research and that ultimately culpability for the pandemic will attach to them. So it is a huge cover up, not just Anthony Fauci, but throughout government, eight different departments of government were funding this type of research. And that's just the non-classified. We think there's still more to be found. One of the research papers that was leaked by a whistleblower is from 2018, where Dr. Xi from Wuhan, Dr. Barrett from UNC, and Dr. Peter Dazak for EcoHealth were asking for money, and they wanted to take a coronavirus and insert a special cleavage site into it that makes it more infectious in humans. It's called a furin cleavage site. Well, that one didn't get funded, but that's exactly what COVID is, is a coronavirus with a, a human cleavage site in it that's never been before seen in nature. And yet when they saw COVID, you'd think if you were one of the people on that grant, you would have immediately called Anthony Fauci and said, holy cow, this new virus has the same sequence as the same grant they were looking for in 2018 that we were going to help them with. Beware, this is more evidence. And yet nobody told uh, the public this. If they told Anthony Fauci, he suppressed it. And we only found out about it, not from records re releases, but from a whistleblower who actually came forward and gave us this information. This is the real problem. There's this enormous cover up within government. And we still have to have the information come out because Democrats still need to be convinced that there is a problem that we need to do something about gain of function research to try to prevent this kind of accident from happening again. Hey, thanks for watching that clip from my conversation with Rand Paul. You can watch another clip right here or the full conversation over here.